everybody. Um, thank you very much for taking the time to listen to me. I know it's lunchtime, so I promise I will not talk for a long period of time. So um, I would like to thank Jesse uh, and uh, the team at Handa and HRRC for this really fantastic research. I've thoroughly enjoyed listening to the various different perspectives today from the panellists and from your research team, Jesse. I think it's going to be extremely helpful. And we're very grateful that you left us funded, so thank you very much. Um, I'd just like to set out a little bit about why the UK is so interested in fighting modern slavery. My Prime Minister, Theresa May, has described modern slavery, of which, of course, human trafficking is a major component, as the greatest human rights challenge of our time. It's a global problem that requires a global solution. Um, and as we've heard today, human trafficking affects men, women and children, and it's a, it's a crime that is happening in every single country around the world, including the UK. We think that at this moment there are between 10 and 13,000 potential victims in the UK, and our authorities are regularly uncovering cases of vulnerable people being exploited and abused, and it has to stop. That's why our Prime Minister launched a global call to action in September at the UN General Assembly, to put an end to modern slavery, forced and child labour and human trafficking. So far, 43 countries have signed up and I really hope that Indonesia is going to be the next to join us. Um, the call to action asks the international community to work together and to put into action the commitments made of, as part of the Sustainable Development Goals, which are to eradicate all forms of modern slavery, forced labour and human trafficking by 2030. So the UK is backing a political commitment with practical action. We've introduced um, legislation, perhaps you might have heard of the UK's Modern Slavery Act. We've set up a task force to implement our commitments and we're funding programmes such as these and activities of, across the world to assist where we can you know, other governments working with victims. Earlier this year, the UK, along with a number of other partners, funded the ICHA to host the second consultation on the implementation of the ASEAN Convention on Trafficking in People. We're delighted that Jessie was able to present early stages of her research to that event, and I think it provided a very valuable contribution, so thank you very much. On the issue that we've discussed today, data, we know this is difficult. In the UK, we continue to develop our national reporting mechanisms, which allow all the various different services that are operating to fight modern slavery and human trafficking to report potential cases to a central database. This is what we've been talking about over and over and over again today, the importance of that central database. And that helps cases to be assessed and acted on by our policy and social workers. So, uh, in Indonesia, as in each of the four countries that have been examined in the study, the challenge faced by the government and the civil society is acute. We have seen all too frequently in the media the dangers that trafficking poses to vulnerable Indonesians, particularly those taking up migrant work overseas. And tackling these issues requires good data. I know from conversations that my team have been having with Bakuda and others in Kemlu that the Indonesian government is putting uh, in a, a tremendous amount of work to strengthen data sharing on human trafficking and is making a huge amount of progress. And I really think that this policy document that you've produced today is going to um, really assist in, in reducing the structures that will enable them to carry on doing that. Um, what comes through very clearly from the guidelines that you've produced, Jesse, is that um, it's not a computer program, it's not a task force, it's not a determined politician that's going to provide the answers to this particular problem. It's the help of the dedicated people on the front line, so all of you here today, who build support for victims, who investigate, who, um, and who build cases to prosecute. So, um, I will end now, I will stop talking, you can all eat, uh, but I'd like to just end by thanking everybody for their engagement on this particular issue. And um, I hope that you will all use the guidelines that Jesse has set out. And thank you very much for attending.